Hey guys, Byron Nimber again here with Pitching 101. Today I'm really excited about the start of this new series called Off Speed But On Target, which allows us to take a really close look at breaking balls and off speed pitches that you see thrown every day. Now today we're going to take a look at one of my favorite pitches in all of baseball, the curveball. Now the curveball has been one of the most controversial pitches in all of baseball. We're going to talk about that today as we uncover some of the real truths behind its effectiveness, its deception to a hitter, and the proper techniques of throwing them. Now before we get into that, let's look at the history of this pitch as a whole. In the early 1860s, a teenager by the name of Candy Cummings had a hobby of throwing seashells out into the ocean, and then he began to study on how the seashells would actually curve as he threw them. When he was called to the big leagues in the early 1870s, he thought that if somehow, some way, he could make the ball, the baseball curve the same way he did the seashells, hitters would swing and miss a lot more. And guess what? He was right. He had to get his hand on the side of the ball and turn it violently, causing the ball to start behind the hitter and curve into the strike zone. From there, the curveball was born. Today, young pitchers throwing the curveball has become one of the most controversial topics in all of baseball. So for me, the question should not be whether or not the curveball is dangerous. The question I have is what do you consider to be a curveball? Whose curveball are we talking about? Candy Cummings or Clayton Kershaw? I think we would all agree that the curveball is safe if it's thrown properly. But what is considered to be proper? We hear the term curveball, and oftentimes we think of it as the Cummings curveball that he designed in the 1870s. We have two major issues here. The first of which is the effectiveness. That ball that stays on a plane for that amount of time is really not that effective to a real hitter. With all due respect, that pitch may have been successful to Shoeless Joe Jackson or Ty Cobb, but to Bryce Harper or Puig, <laughs> you may have a serious problem on your hands. Let's talk about safety. To make that ball actually curve, a pitcher has to get around the baseball as if he were turning and twisting his hand violently. Think of standing in this position and violently twisting a doorknob clockwise. The UCL ligament was not created to turn and twist in that fashion. Now, most people will say they agree with that and that they teach kids to throw the ball over the top. And that's true. However, if that front shoulder opens up, which is even more common on the fastball, the hand will be forced to get around the ball, causing a strain on the UCL. This is not a curveball to me. So as you can see, if this is what we define as a curveball, it's not only dangerous to kids, it's dangerous to pitchers at any level. I define a curveball as being the vertical angle of the break and the rotation of a ball. We hear the term 12-6 curveball. That means we want the ball to consistently change planes, going from an imaginary clock at 12 o'clock down to 6. But not everybody throws from a 12 o'clock arm slot. We get that, and that's great. That's fine. As long as we get to the 6, as close as we can, I'm okay with that. But the break of the ball doesn't necessarily tell me it's being thrown correctly. The rotation does, however. The best way to tell whether or not a curveball is being thrown properly is by comparing the spin to that of a fastball. A fastball has backspin, a curveball has topspin. Not only will the pitch break at the angle we want, but the hitter will have a very difficult time telling what the pitch is because the rotations are so similar. For example, which of these pitches is a fastball and which is a curveball? Think of it as hammering a nail. In order to hit a nail on the head, 
our hand must be directly on top of the nail, driving it straight down. Now in this picture, notice how his knuckles are pointing to the direction that he's trying to hammer. If his knuckles come off that angle, the head of the hammer will come offline as well and then bend the nail. With a curveball, our knuckles will point directly to the catcher. If our knuckles come off that angle, we will get around the baseball as well. All in all, if our hand stays on top of the baseball, creating topspin, the curveball is a very safe and effective pitch to throw.